Hey Jasper, I might be a little bit late from work tonight. Julia has asked me to stay to finish up some reports that we really need for tomorrow's presentation. Could you maybe cook dinner tonight? I don't think I'll be back in time to do it, and I really don't want to be cooking late into the night after such a hard day at work. Oh, and I guess you want me to do the washing and clean the rest of the house while I'm at it, huh? What? No, I'm just asking for a little bit of help tonight because I'm going to be late. That's all. Well, what about me? I've been working just as hard as you. Why should I have to do all the cooking simply because you can't be bothered to? It's not that I can't be bothered to. I just won't be physically home until late. I won't be able to make any food at all. Why do you have to work late? Just tell your boss to do the work herself and come back at the usual time. I was looking forward to some fried chicken tonight, so I want you to come back home and make that. Jasper, I can't do that. Julia needs my help. Besides, I don't want to dump all that work on her. I've been working on this project for months now and it's finally all coming together. This meeting tomorrow is with some very high up people, and if we make a good impression, then big things could happen for me. So, I don't think you cooking for one night is going to be such a huge deal. I don't want to cook. I've had a tiring day as well. Doing what? You don't work at the minute. I bet all you've done is sit in front of the TV all day watching sports. I mean, have you even cleaned up your dirty laundry from the bedroom floor like I asked you to? So what have I been at home? It doesn't mean my day has been any less tiring. I even had to go to the store to get some new batteries as the TV remotes ran out and we had none in the house. Oh, that reminds me. On your way home, you'll have to stop by the shop and pick some things up. What? Yeah, we need some more toilet rolls, some milk, eggs, bread, sugar, tea bags, juice, and a few other things. I'll make you a list and send it through in a bit. Hang on a minute. I've got to stay late at work. I'm already tired and hungry, so I'm not going to do a full-on grocery shop once I finish work. If we need things, then you'll have to go and get them. You're not so busy, so it should be fine, right? What? I'm not going shopping. That's your job. You're the wife, and that comes under housework. So it's your job to do that. Can you not be so lazy just for once? All I'm asking is for a little bit of help, because I'm near the end of my robe. I do everything. And I mean everything. So for once, can you get off of your butt and help out? I have no clue what you're on about. You don't do everything. I've worked for quite a long time to bring back a decent wage for us to buy this house, and if I remember, you were the one not working then, so why is it so wrong for me to have some time off when you did exactly the same? But it wasn't time off. The entire time that I was unemployed, I was looking for work. Not to mention, I was keeping the house in order managing our finances so that we knew what we could afford and what we couldn't. I was also cooking all of our meals and basically managing all of the house. You do none of those things. You make it sound as if you did loads. All you really did was what a wife should do, which is the housework. I'm not just your slave to push around and do whatever you tell her to. I'm your wife. We should be equal partners in everything. Whether it's in money or household chores, we need to share these things so that neither of us feels overwhelmed. That's what I'm feeling at the moment, completely overwhelmed. And whilst I love my job, it still can be quite demanding. So when it gets like that, I need you to pick up the slack and actually help me out, okay? Laura, I have every right to relax and have a break. Let's face it, I've worked so much harder than you when I was working at the factory, so I deserve a little time off to recuperate. I'm sorry if you don't like it, but it's the truth. So if you have to do the household chores and everything else, then I'm not too concerned as it's only fair. You don't care? You don't care if I'm working myself into such a state? Picking up after you and trying to maintain our home as well as a job? That I honestly feel like I could cry if even the slightest thing inconvenienced me? You're really not bothered by that? Well, not really. Women are generally a lot more emotional than men and like to make things into more of an issue than they actually are. 
So this is probably just you doing that. It's likely that it's that time of the month for you as well, which always makes you more angry and irritable. In fact, I would really rather you try and control your emotions more. It can get quite tedious to deal with. Oh, can they? How rude of me to actually have feelings. I'll try and subdue them next time I'm feeling particularly angry. Great, thanks. I was being sarcastic. Oh. Ugh, whatever. I'm getting back to work. What about my dinner? You'll have to figure it out yourself. I'm busy. Oh my god, I'm so annoyed right now. Oh joys, what's happened now? It's Jasper. Oh god, just knowing it has something to do with him already has me feeling annoyed. What's he done now? Well, I just messaged him to tell him that I will be late home from work tonight, as I'm currently working on that huge project I told you about. And we have a meeting with the bosses about it tomorrow, so we need to finalize some things. I asked him if he would be able to cook us dinner so that I wouldn't have to worry about it when I got home. And you know what he said? What? He told me that he wasn't going to cook dinner because he's had a tiring day. Hang on, but he doesn't work. Uh-huh. He then went on to insult me and every single woman on this earth and claim that I'm too emotional and need to keep my feelings subdued so that I don't annoy him. Jeez, what a jerk. I honestly don't know what you see in him, sis. I mean, why do you want to be married to someone who does nothing but treat you like a slave? Not to mention that you're earning all the money and that he's just wasting it on beer and gambling. What do you mean on gambling? He promised me that he would stop doing that. Well, he's not kept his promise. I saw him the other day going to the casino in town. I followed him there to see what he was up to, and he sat right down at a blackjack table and proceeded to blow over $300. He lost it all. Are you serious right now? $300? Yeah, and I asked the dealer when Jasper left. The guy also told me that Jasper was racked up Quite a hefty amount of debt there, too. Thousands, apparently. Let me get this straight. My husband expects me to work and clean and cook and everything else while he goes off and spends my hard-earned money on gambling and drinks and stuff? Yeah, like I said, I don't know why you're still with the jerk. I'm wondering that myself. Honestly, I get out while you still can. I don't want to see my little sister lose who she is, Simply because of her useless husband. You can do so much better than him. Yeah, you're right. I can. Thanks, Michael, for always being there for me. I don't know what I'd do without you. Yeah, yeah. You owe me dinner for this. I'll get you the best steak money can buy. You better. <laughs> anyway, let me know how things go and if I need to kick anyone's butt. Okay? Will do. Love you, bro. Love you too, sis. Lara, where are you? It's much later than usual. You should be back from work by now. Also, the dog needs walking, so you've got to do that when you get back. I've not eaten yet either, as I thought I'd wait for you to get home and cook us a nice dinner. I've already eaten, so I won't be making dinner. And the dog will have to just go out in the garden. I'm too tired to walk him. Hang on, what do you mean you've already eaten? Julia and I ordered a pizza whilst we worked on our project. I'm full. Well, that's not fair. What about me? What about you? I told you that I wouldn't be cooking when I get back. If you decided to ignore me, that's on you. But I'm not going to be cooking anything when I get back. But I'm hungry and the dog's whining is really getting on my nerves. You need to come back home now and sort all this out. No. What do you mean, no? I mean, I'm done running around and picking up after you. I'm not your mom, and I sure am not your maid. These last few months have been absolutely awful for me, as I feel like I'm taking care of a child rather than living with a fully grown man and husband. Your complete lack of care and sympathy for me have pushed me to the end of my rope, and I've finally realized that you don't want me to be your wife. You don't love me like that. You just want me to be your live-in maid. Well, 
that's not happening anymore. What do you mean? What are you going to do? I'm filing for divorce. Wait, no, p please don't do that. I, I don't know what I'd do without you. That's not my problem. Maybe you should have spent a bit more time helping out with responsibilities instead of piling them all onto me. But it's your responsibility as the wife. We don't live in the medieval times anymore. In case you hadn't noticed, women actually have a lot more say in how they live their lives, even if you don't like to think so. And I've decided that I deserve someone who will love me and treat me as an equal. And that clearly isn't you. I'm staying at my brother's house tonight, and I'll be around to pick up my things and the dog in the morning. But I don't even have a job. How will I live? You'll have to find new work. Although with the debts you've racked up at the casino, you might have to find two. How do you know about that? Michael saw you the other day. Honestly, I really don't know what I saw in you. Look, I'm your husband, and you need to do as I say. No, I really don't. Goodbye, Jasper. I hope the next girl who marries you is able to whip you into some sort of shape. I wish her the best of luck. I divorced Jasper as soon as I was able to. Once I was free of the lazy bum, I actually felt a whole lot better. I wasn't constantly being told what to do and worked like a slave. The project that I had been working on was a huge hit and I actually ended up being promoted to a much higher position with a huge pay increase. Jasper, on the other hand, was forced to get two jobs, one as a night porter and one as a checkout man, so that he could cover the cost of his debts and have enough money to live. As bad as it is, maybe it will teach him a valuable lesson about responsibility and helping out those who are close to him. Can you not get off work for my birthday after all, Roxanne? No, sorry. I know I'm not a good girlfriend when I can't even celebrate my boyfriend's birthday with him. It's okay. I know you're busy with work. I'm really sorry. I'll make it up to you next time. You really don't have to worry. I'm used to spending the night alone. <laughs> Is that supposed to sound suspicious? <laughs> Don't mess about with other women just because I won't be there. Of course not. I only have eyes for you, Roxanne. I know. Oops. <laughs> you already knew it. Let's go somewhere after work is settled down for me. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It's been a while, Dewey. What's up? Hey, Simon. Not much. How many years has it been? We haven't seen each other for a long time. It'll be about four or five years, because I remember telling you about my daughter being born. How time flies. We talked about visiting your new house, but that didn't happen in the end. I haven't seen your wife and kid yet. Yeah, it's a shame we couldn't make it happen. We are both busy with work, and you went abroad soon after getting hired. True, true. It was pretty crazy for me every day. But you came back home, right? Yeah, I'm back now. Hey, why don't we meet up for the first time in a while? I want to visit your house, too. Uh, I wish I could, but I'm living by myself away from my family for work. I contacted you because I noticed you're back home now while I was checking on social media. I'm just so bored. <laughs> I see. I guess you only talk to me when you're bored? Aha. <laughs> it's because I can't see my wife and daughter. And my daughter's getting ready for bed by the time I come back from work. I can only Skype her on the weekends. I thought I could get some attention from you. <laughs> Ha <laughs> is that the first thing you say to your friend that you haven't seen in years? Are you busy? Well, I'm pretty free. You see, you've never had hobbies, so I thought you were always just spacing out outside of work. <laughs> Don't make fun of me. I have a girlfriend now. What? Huh? Really? You didn't seem very interested in women in college. 
You grew up. Daddy's so proud of you. I don't remember being raised by you. But it must be tough to live alone apart from your family. Tell me about it. Before this, I was away on a business trip. Sales is tough. I love my wife and daughter, but I have to do this for work. Yeah, you need to work hard for them. It must be tough being a family man. Must be even worse while your kid is so young. Yeah, I couldn't celebrate her birthday last year because of work. So I want to make sure I'm there for her this year. Actually, I took the evening off on her birthday. Wow, who knew you'd become such a good father, Simon? <laughs> As for me, I'll celebrate my birthday alone this year. I'm happy for you. But you have a girlfriend, right? Uh, don't try to start a fight between me and her. <laughs> She's got something important at work that day. I almost want to make her choose between me and her job. <laughs> oh, you're being such a needy boyfriend. <laughs> but it's been a while since I got a girlfriend, so I was overly excited. By the way, your daughter's birthday is the same as mine, right? Sadly. <laughs> Please celebrate her birthday on behalf of me. <laughs> I might spare one second to remember that it's your birthday. Only one second? Well, thanks. Well, go to bed now. See ya. Texting me, then disappearing so soon, you selfish jerk. Happy birthday, Dewey. Hey, aren't you still celebrating your daughter's birthday? You don't need to pay attention to me, but thanks anyway. What are you doing? You enjoying your lonely birthday? <laughs> Actually, I got a message from my girlfriend, and she can celebrate together. It sounds like she could finish work earlier, like you. I'm so happy. Oh, that's good to hear. By the way... I went to buy a cake an hour ago because I thought it was going to be a lonely birthday. So I was about to take the cake home and go eat it alone. Ah, oh, you must have been feeling so sad. Never mind that. So, I left the shop cheerily after I bought a cake. And there was a little girl crying in front of the shop. So I gave it to her instead. I'm glad I did something nice like that. Maybe my girlfriend is coming to see me now because of my good karma. <laughs> wow, you're so cool. Maybe God was watching your selfless act. <laughs> but man, she was crying buckets. It seemed like she didn't have enough money to get a cake. She was crying alone, holding a big crocodile plushie. Crocodile plushie? How old she look? Now, uh, maybe around five years old? I did wonder why such a little kid was shopping alone. I figured her parents were somewhere nearby and asked her to buy a cake? Wait, maybe that was my daughter. Wait, how come? My daughter's really into reptiles. I sent her a big crocodile plushie for her last birthday while I was away on business. She's five years old this year. Whoa. Wait, your wife's at home, right? Then there's no way she'd be buying a cake alone. Yeah, you're right. Maybe I was reaching. In my mind, crocodile equals my daughter, so... Really? <laughs> anyway, I'm about to arrive home. Finally. <laughs> Go give her a nice birthday surprise. Yeah, for sure. But the girl you mentioned earlier might be my daughter. Huh? Why? My wife isn't here. I can't get hold of her. My daughter was eating a cake, alone. No way. My daughter says my wife told her she won't be back until tomorrow because she has stuff to do. So she was told to buy a cake by herself. Huh? You didn't hear anything from her? 
Or maybe she has plans today? No, I didn't hear anything from her. It's not normal to leave a five-year-old child alone, even if she's got some emergency. She should have told me if it really was an emergency. Ah, oh, it's weird that I can't get a hold of her. I wonder if something happened to her. I hope she hasn't gotten involved in some kind of weird accident. Why don't you contact her parents? Nah, it doesn't sound like some emergency. Why is that? Well, my daughter said she left to wear makeup and a pretty dress. I checked her closet, but her favorite designer bag is gone. I think she went somewhere where she needs to dress up. That sounds like... Ah, oh, you don't think... Maybe she went to see another guy. Oh, although I don't want to think about that possibility. It's highly likely that she went out because I told her I can't come home today. If it's true, that sounds awful. Even though it's your daughter's birthday? Oh, that's horrible. Hey, Dewey. You haven't told me your girlfriend's name, have you? What's her name? Huh? Why are you asking me now? Just tell me. What the heck? Her name is Roxanne. No way. What do you mean? My wife's name is Roxanne, too. What? Isn't that reaching too far? Are you trying to say my girlfriend is your wife? Oh, but it can't be. Yeah, if that was the only reason. My daughter overheard when she was on the phone and said the name Dewey before she left here. But I'm not sure I can trust just that, because she's so young. When is your girlfriend visiting you today? She said about an hour from now. She texted me earlier since she wanted to get ready. Are you seriously thinking your wife is my girlfriend? That's impossible. Here. Picture my wife and daughter. They look familiar? Oh my god. That's my girlfriend. And the girl I met earlier today. Then it's confirmed. No way. She told me she was single. Oh, dude. Please forgive me. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, I swear to God, I really didn't know. I know you, Dewey. You wouldn't knowingly get involved with a married woman. Looks like you and I were both being lied to by her. Sorry, I don't know what to say. I'm at a loss for words right now. Hey, Dewey. I can't forgive her for making my precious daughter feel so miserable and for having an affair. How about you? Yeah, I'm mad too. Oh, but right now I'm just shocked. And of course I think she's a horrible person. She lied to her husband and ditched her daughter's birthday to see another guy? Oh, and that guy is me. I have an idea. Can you come by my house right now? Hey, Dewey. I arrived at your house, but it doesn't look like you're home. I came as soon as I could after finishing work. I want you to come back soon since it's cold outside. I won't come back today. Stop kidding me. You were so excited when I told you we could celebrate your birthday together. I bought your favorite, a cheesecake. I went out of my way to buy it from a place that does really nice cheesecakes. You should probably go home right now. What? I even made time to come all the way to your house for you, though. Isn't that better than hiding the fact that you're married with a kid, Roxanne? I can't do this with a married woman. Huh? What is this? That's not funny at all. There are some things you can joke about and some you can't. Oh, you don't need to bother with that. I already have evidence. Evidence? 
I don't know what kind of evidence you think you have, but do you think I'm lying to you, Dewey? You still won't admit it. If you don't believe me, I could tell you your daughter and husband's names. Oh, so you really do know. Oh, it's so gross that you even know their names. What you're doing is far more gross, Roxanne. Then we need to end this. I liked you better than most other guys who I've dated. <laughs> you mean you've had multiple affairs in the past, too? Being a housewife is quite boring, you know. My husband often goes off on business trips or living away from home, so he tends to not be around. So, if I feel lonely, sometimes I'll do it to kill time. You sure showed your true colors quickly. Uh, what? <laughs> do you think I'd beg to stay with you or something like that? <laughs> well, I liked you a fair bit, but I was with you just for fun. Of course I don't see you as a serious partner when I have my husband. You were lying to your husband, your daughter, and me, but you don't feel any guilt at all. Ah, oh, don't phrase it like that. It makes me sound bad. It's your and his fault for not noticing. Ah, oh, really? Men are stupid. Yeah, you're right. Dating someone so stupid like you will leave a black mark on my dating history for sure. Huh. You're the stupid one here. You couldn't see who I really was. Then, uh, this is it. Unlike you, Dewey, I have a family who's waiting for me. Goodbye. Yeah, everyone's waiting for you. Ugh, you don't need to reply to me anymore because it's annoying. If you want to cry about it, can you do that somewhere else? Thanks. <laughs> oh, trust me, I'm not crying. It seems like your daughter still doesn't understand the situation. But Simon, his parents, and yours seemed furious. Everyone's waiting for you, so why don't you come here soon? Huh? Simon? How do you know his name? Your husband and I are friends, so he already knows all about your affair. You're kidding, right? I'm not kidding. Shall I send you a picture? No. Oh, no way. I won't believe it. I couldn't believe it at first either. That I was dating my friend's wife? And that she was the kind of person who left her little kid alone, even on her birthday? Uh, you really are crazy. You're just saying that, right? It, because my husband's on a business trip. He came back home earlier for her birthday. And by the way, I'm at your house, too. I showed them pictures of us two together as evidence of your affair. What are you doing? What is wrong with you? I should be asking you that. Quit screwing around. It's fine if you lied to me. It's just whatever now. But all this time, you left your daughter to go and see me? Seriously, I can't believe it, and I certainly don't forgive you. What were you thinking? What is Simon saying? He's not saying anything about divorce, right? Do you think he can live with the kind of partner who leaves his kid at home? Well, that's up to Simon, not you. Anyway, there's divorce papers on the table. Where we're talking it over. Looks like he's decided on a divorce. No. Help me, Dewey. I'll apologize about what I said earlier. At least save me before breaking up. Tell him it was a mistake, or make up a good excuse. You are really stupid. Think about it. Why the hell would I help you? Plus, you were seeing me just for fun, right? But you love me, don't you? Then why won't you be a man and help me? Why won't you be a decent human being and take responsibility for what you did? Just hurry up and get here so you can talk to them. Oh, I bet Simon, his parents and mine are all furious. 
I'm scared to go see them. I can't go home. You're still just thinking about yourself. You're not at all concerned about your daughter. I think you're the one who's scary. I'm on Simon's side, so you won't be getting any help from me. What should I do? Do we? I'm doomed. Oh, my life is messed up. I can't believe that we'll end in divorce after all this time. You don't deserve to say that after cheating. Who was it who ruined everyone else's life? Is it us when we were lied to? No, it's you, stupid. After that, Simon and Roxanne got divorced, with him getting full custody over Sally, their daughter. At first, Roxanne tried to run away from the discussion, but she didn't have anyone to rely on, so she reluctantly went to her parents' house. She was blamed by her parents and Simon, which left her totally exhausted. She left the custody to him in the end. After they got divorced, Simon transferred to a non-sales role to avoid business trips. He's working hard in his new role at work and as a single father. He gets paid less than before, but he's happy to have more time with Sally. On the other hand, Roxanne needs to pay child support and was sued by Simon for emotional damages. I heard she's working all day at a job she hates. Her parents, who have been helping her make payments, are watching her closely. There's no chance that she could skip town to avoid the payments. It might be good for her to have to work hard after being so lazy and having affairs. Even though I didn't know, I had a hand in Roxanne's affair. I offered to pay compensation to Simon, but he forgave me on account of the fact that she lied to me too. Although I wouldn't exactly call it redemption, I take Sally out sometimes when Simon is busy. Recently, it seems like she got used to me and associates my visiting with a fun time. I'm glad, honestly, but I feel that Simon is jealous. So I hope she doesn't get too attached to me. Simon and I don't feel like dating women for a while after what happened with Roxanne. But every day is fulfilling for us both because we adore Sally so much.